addressing extreme violence in the city at a, at a grassroots level, I believe, is the main solution to tackling the problems that we're seeing. So we got to get the communities active. We got to get them caring about where they live. We got to get communities that are a little bit smaller and under the radar sort of active and uh, get their voices heard. When you hear about programs like the one the police are involved in right now and the potential work that could take place alongside, um, are you confident? Are you hopeful? How are you feeling about what's happening right now in the city? I think hopeful is a good word. Um, we've had some good interactions uh, with, the, with the city, with uh, Toronto Community Housing, with Toronto Police Services, uh, showing a greater interest, obviously, in tackling root cause issues and really getting to the meat of, of these problems. So I'm, I'm, I feel positive about those, about those things. I just sort of waiting. We're waiting to see what happens and we're pushing forward sort of together, right? So that's we've, we've been saying this from the beginning. We want to see unity. It takes a multilateral approach. And now it seems that people are stepping up. Give us some background. Um, where does all this come from? Well, I think if you go to the seed, the actual, you know, seed that the roots sprout from would be marginalization, poverty. Um, people who live, come from communities like this feel like they have no voice. They feel like they have no chance, no real shot at making a difference. So we would like to see these areas turn more into a transitional type of community rather than, you know, generations uh, of people who, who, who live here and think that there's no better than this. Tell me more about your role in all of this because uh, your role is an important one in trying to bridge that gap, correct? We're trying. So I mostly act as a megaphone, um, a voice for communities that maybe not, are not as comfortable you know, uh, speaking in boardroom settings or to, to media. And we kind of gather data, we gather information about what their needs and wants are. And because we have a voice, we now use that platform to bring their voices to those tables and see what we can get accomplished for them. Uh, you know, as one of my mentors say, it's not that we're underserved. Uh, these communities are poorly served, right? So we need to lead them and help them understand that there, there are some resources out there, it's just they don't know about them. They have no clue that they exist, so we sort of act as a buffer in that way too. The city as a whole, all they hear about is these acts of violence. All they see is another shooting in this neighborhood, that's just a bad neighborhood, and that's where all these, these bad people are. What do people need to understand beyond what we the media provide as headlines? That's, that's a good point. Um, we, these are, we, we're, these are communities. They care about each other. We are Torontonians. These are Torontonians. You know, the, uh, most of them care about safety. They care about your children. They want you to care about their children. You know, they, they want equal opportunities. They want schools with good education. You know, they, they want to know that they are capable of going to university and college. They want to know that there is a career waiting for them at the end of that. So there's really no difference between the community you come from and these communities, except for the, the social economic gap. That's it.